Coming up on Tech News Today, the fate of the .XXX domain name, a new way to legally download movies, and municipal Wi-Fi under attack again. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Saturday, April 1st, 2006. Tech News Today is brought to you by MailRoute.info. MailRoute is a secure hosted service that provides enterprise-grade virus and spam filtering to companies of any size. Try it right now, absolutely free, at MailRoute.info. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Aya Zaktar. And I'm Jason Howell. Welcome to the Twit Network show about news in the world of computers and technology. Joining us from BitTech is Mr. Will Harris. Welcome, Will. Tom, always a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to, that you could join us You're from all the way over in the United Kingdom. Are you in Oxford? I am indeed, yes, and our office is uh, just outside of London, so I've been, I've been busy there this week with, uh, with some crazy hardware. What have you been uh, looking at? Well, uh, an amazing uh, notebook that has NVIDIA SLI graphics in it, which is pretty cool, I think. Sweet stuff. That's, that's fun. So you just get to play with that. That's great. Oh, yes. All right, well, let's uh, start off uh, with our first story. Uh, Toshiba has begun selling the first players using next-generation HD DVD video format as of Friday. They are first to market with the HD XA1, priced at about 110,000 yen in uh, Japan. So that's, I'm sorry, that is 110,000 yen, but it's about $936. Uh, this brings HD DVD first to market in this war. Yeah, that means the HD standards are out there. Blu-ray still lagging behind. I think there's a Panasonic player coming up. What's a fifteen hundred dollars? Yeah, the Panasonic player isn't coming up till fall, and it's going to be around fifteen hundred dollars. So, I mean, out of the gate, it looks like HD DVD has a huge advantage over Blu-ray. Well, especially this this kind of, I can't help but be reminded to the the Betamax VHS days. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, given Sony's track record, I just don't really see Blu-ray winning out in this situation. Yeah, but the difference here is that, like, the discs are about the same size. So I'm thinking this is going to be a lot like the whole CDR, CD plus R, minus whatever. Even though they have different technologies, I don't see why you can't just put those lenses in the same actual box. Like, maybe we'll have both these discs at the same time. We'll just yeah. pop it in. I almost, I almost feel like they don't have to compete. Like, we're actually going to, you're just going to get used to seeing HD DVD alongside Blu-ray. Right. I mean, you choose your camp, but... All the movies are going to be released but in both formats. Although Blu-ray, I mean, it's been delayed. Sony recently delayed the PlayStation 3 game console. The bigger it was number originally of people, supposed to come Mi out. Microsoft's on the side of HD DVD. It's got the leg up. I and I I, I see. I hear what you're saying, I as I think it's possible that that you could unify it somehow. But usually, it's just easier for everybody to standardize yeah. on one. And will and I mean, I, yeah, what do you I, think? I, I, yeah, I mean, I think the, the fact that PlayStation 3 has been delayed and there are, you know, just uh, lots and lots of rumors that the Xbox 360, which is already out, is going to come out with an HD DVD add-on drive, which is just going to be so much cheaper anyway. Uh, it does kind of look, you know, and forgetting, even if you put aside the whole industry standard versus the kind of Betamax thing, it does kind of look like HD DVD. HD DVD has got it so It's hard to say. Box. We're going to have to get used to saying that. We're going to have to well, get used to I saying know. it, right? Uh, <laughs> or, or not. I mean, it's, it's quite possible that we just don't see any more optical storage. Neither one of these win. Uh, movie Link and Cinema Now both announced as new movie download services that are legal and backed by the industry. Uh, they, they've been facing slow DVD sales. They've been trying to combat piracy. Business Week cites 20 to $30 for new, newer movies and 10 to $20 for older ones. So these are about the same prices as a DVD, but you get the convenience of being able to download them on your computer. Why would you pick up a digital download over an optical disc when you can actually have that thing? It's secure. You're not worried about corruption or anything weird, losing it. I mean, it's an actual disc. I mean, at 30 bucks, why would you bother with such a thing? Well, and, and, you know, that's one of the problems here is they don't provide DVD burning support. So you can't back no, these up and turn them into DVDs. You can't You're going to have to watch them on your computer. You can't copy the movies to two other machines, but that's where it ends. So, I mean, they're, they're giving you a little bit of flexibility, but 
Not as much well, as I, you would like, I as. And I think I think the the idea of having a streaming service is fantastic because if you can imagine, you know, if you if you imagine like a service like Netflix where you've got this massive library of DVDs that you can rent, if maybe you know one day in the future you could have that entire library, but you could stream it instead of having to wait for the DVD to come in the post, wouldn't that be really convenient just to have like a Netflix style library that you could just get out at any point? Well, I'm That's sure true. Movie, movie Link and Cinema now probably had to do a lot of wrangling to get licenses to get streaming or to even be able to do this whole download. Thing. Oh, you get to own it and copy it? That seemed a little crazy. You know what I, I think mean, is interesting is uh, they're not, uh, neither service, Movie Link nor Cinema Now, are uh, getting into any Disney movies. And the word is it's possibly because of Steve Jobs' involvement with mm. Disney. You know, they talk about iTunes, uh, bringing in movie downloads to the iTunes store so it won't just be music anymore. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's uh, I, don't, I don't know how far these guys are going to go if they can't actually have an entire collection. Yeah, if you're going to fight with piracy, you've got to be as accessible and as cheap as piracy. So I don't, I don't think this is going to work out. Uh, more news about the dot triple X domain. Uh, ICANN has put it on hold for good. They say that it is not going to happen after objections from the Bush administration. Uh, some members of the international community community are incensed. Uh, they say the decision leaves the triple X domain in bureaucratic limbo and is a sign that the U.S. is letting domestic politics influence the day-to-day -day operation of the Internet. Well, I mean, it kind of sounds like it is. Conservative groups, they're not, you know, they don't want dot .xxx to be available, even though you can pretty much, I, I don't know how, how much is, this is going to keep people back from finding porn, pornographic material on the Internet, but... It just seems like a political argument. It is affecting, argument. you know, on a global scale, what what seems to be a, a, a America-based decision. Yes. Well, what do you think? Well, I mean, what, what's the what's the sense over in your neck of the woods? Well, I think the fact that ICANN is based in the states is is always going to mean there's a degree of, of political interference. But I think, you know, there are arguments for and against the kind of ghettoization of XXX. Um, I think it's just disappointing that it's it's you know the the argument has been stymied. I suppose that we've not really had a chance to have a proper well, I feel to have a proper discussion about it, and now it's not ever going to see the light of day. Yeah, it sounds like this is this is done for you. We will not see it. All right, uh, let's take a quick break and thank our sponsor, MailRoute at MailRoute.info. If you would like to rid your life of spam, one user, 50,000 users, it doesn't matter. MailRoute will help get rid of it. There's nothing easier for filtering than MailRoute. Tom Johnson, who uh, writes FrontBridge, uh, also provides MailRoute. You can visit MailRoute Info to sign up as a Twit listener, and you'll receive a 10% discount for the life of your account. Check it out. $2 per user per month for 10 users, $30 per user per year for single users. If you want spam out of your life, visit MailRoute.info. Boing Boing has a post today uh, from Jenny Jardin about a video blogger named Josh Wolf, uh, who frequently covers protests and other civil unrest in San Francisco. On July 8th of last year, he shot a protest in the Mission, and now the cops and the FBI particularly would like to take a look at his unedited footage. He has posted edited footage of it, uh, but they are doing what he says is a, uh, a fishing expedition to try to find information of, about a cop that was struck. Uh, and he is attempting to quash numerous motions uh, from including a subpoena to get his tapes saying, so, hey, I'm a journalist. I don't need to hand this over. I want to protect my sources. So he's uploaded some QuickTime videos to his blog. Uh, does the officer who uh, apparently was injured, it, is that video included in the footage that he shared? I think you actually see the officer down. You don't see how he gets injured. I see. Uh, but the weird thing is, I mean, he's a video blogger. I mean, I, I'm not from, I didn't take uh, classes in journalism or anything like that. Does he even qualify for this kind of protection? I mean, he wants to hold his sources, but like, if this could help find out who injured a cop, I mean, what's so horrible about that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's the principle of the thing. It's being able to say, look, you know, that you you if you want to find something in particular, I'll give it over. But they want all of his tapes, and he's afraid that they're going to use that mm. to go after the protesters. Mm. Well, I think there's the argument here about you know whether bloggers are real journalists or not. And I think you know, uh, you know, certainly video bloggers. There's no real. I think it's hard to argue that they really deserve the same kind of protections that real journalists get. I mean, we're yet to see you know any kind of blog, you know, news source really, you know, make it as a, as a mainstream publication. So I think, you know, the, the, the police have some arguments that, you know, the kind of journalistic protections that he's arguing for don't really apply to him. Yeah, I mean, imagine if we were all considered journalists on some sort of scale just because we had cameras and we could upload video to various sites on the internet. I, I mean, that would 
that that's kind of ludicrous. Right. So if everybody had it a camera, it kind of makes it meaningless. If everybody had a camera and can actually post anything, that's they're journalists. Journalists now. I mean, that's how it works. Yeah. I mean, there has to be a line drawn somewhere. I, you know, I, we'll see how this. Uh, I'm sure, you know, as video services continue to to unfold. I mean, I know people are just kind of getting used to the idea of uploading video online now. Yeah, but more it doesn't, and more people are going to do it. Though. Yeah. It just, I, I don't know. I guess we'll just kind of have to see how it plays out. Hmm. Uh, a, a bill is working its way through Congress uh, called the Telecommunications Act of 2006, and a draft explicitly says broadband providers may not block or unreasonably impair or interfere with Internet access. And the final version gives the Federal Communications Commission the authority to set rules and publish violations. That has nobody happy. Uh, Verizon's CTO Mark Wegleitner, uh, talking to CNET, says he thinks net neutrality is overhyped. Uh, that the network should be allowed to to make the deals they want to make. It won't impinge on other people to innovate and come up with new websites. Meanwhile, public knowledge says that Barton's bill does not contain strong enough penalties to discourage misbehavior. Just having the FCC be in charge of net neutrality uh, won't stop anyone uh, from doing what they want. And, and public knowledge thinks that within the next two years, we're going to see net neutrality violations. We're going to see a tiered Internet. And the, uh, the CTO of Verizon also said, if a content provi provider wants a special capability in the network, then we are interested in providing that. That's our business. I mean, that sounds like he's teeing up the tiered Internet, which sounds like it'd be a horrible thing. I mean, I mean, you'd think legislation could help a little bit to stop something like this. I want to be able to access all my content at the same, like, uh, they should all be equal. They shouldn't be tiered like this. I do think that uh, it, it's a good idea to give the FCC clear authority on this situation, and that's one if there is one good thing out of this bill, that's what it is, is we know who is in charge, where the debate should exist, and there won't be a lot of trouble over whether the FCC should set these rules or not. I mean, definitely they need to figure out some policies now, mm -hmm. so we're not talking about this in five years. That, yeah, that's, that's scary. Oh, God. Well, governments move slow. Uh, finally, uh, a group is looking for a change to the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, because of legal restrictions that could prevent them from discovering things like the recent Sony rootkit. Uh, they say that they actually had to break copyright in order to research, and they want an exemption put in place uh, for security researchers. The recording industry says, no way. Uh, we're not backing down. We don't want anybody to have an exemption to this. Yeah, for the DMCA to not have any carved out exam uh, exemptions means that anyone who tries to actually learn something about the Sony rootkit is a criminal. And uh, it, this is not the intention of something like this. You're supposed to be protecting content. It's not about you know, installing rootkits. It, it, this seems like an overreaching uh, by well, Sony. All right. Uh, finally, uh, Microsoft is under the gun from the European Commission for their forthcoming operating, much much delayed. I don't know if we'll ever see it. Windows Vista operating system. Uh, oh, Vista. Microsoft told the European Commission Wednesday it's going to work with competitors to build products and services capable of working with Vista, and it will de-bundle uh, the Windows Media Player in an effort to satisfy Europe. Will is this going to be enough? <laughs> It it might be, but on the other hand, the guys in the European Union are so hell bent on you know quashing Microsoft's so called advantage that it gets from bundling all these things together. Um, I mean, Windows Media Player is is one aspect of it. Obviously, that's killed off other competitors like you know Winamp and things like that. Um, but you know, it's not hard to imagine a scenario where people start saying, "Well, hang on." You know, Microsoft suddenly owns, you know, whatever it is, 96% of the browser market with Internet Explorer. Why don't we make them decouple Internet Explorer from, from Windows as well? And, you know, some kind of perverse scenario where you can choose what kind of browser that you get when you load up Windows rather than just getting Internet Explorer. It's, it's, I can't see it stopping here, to be honest. Well, Microsoft has re resisted the idea of decoupling Internet Explorer because they say that Windows can't work without it. It's, it's essential to the operating system. Well, that may or may not be true. Um, I guess we'll find out over, perhaps over the next couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, and I also don't think Europe's ever going to let up on Microsoft. They will never, they will never be friends. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ever see a situation where Microsoft is complaining to the EU about somebody else, can no. you? That's not yeah. going to happen. Who would they complain about, Apple? <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the news fuse. Apple's long-standing lawsuit with the Beatles may not be about music at all. Apple Corp, that's the Beatles, uh, not Apple Computer, will argue in its opening statement that Apple Computers can't promote its business using an Apple logo. An iTunes ad shows the Apple Computer logo at the end of the commercial, and the Beatles say that's the problem. The reboot of Superman, called Superman Returns, will be the first live-action movie to take its 2D 
footage and convert it to IMAX 3D. Now, the whole movie won't be turned into 3D, only parts of it. This is the first new Superman movie in a long time, so ought to be interesting. I'm excited. Listening to music at loud volumes could damage your ears. Apple's got a solution for that. New firmware for Apple's iPod Nano and fifth generation iPod will allow users to define a limit to audio levels. You know what that means? We can yell. I'm not going to loud, yell loudly on that cast, but we can. <laughs> don't, in case they to. don't have the limits yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ubisoft is facing a class action lawsuit because of its DRM scheme. Christopher Spence is suing for $5 million in damages, claiming that the Star Force DRM on some recent Ubisoft titles can compromise the security of Windows. Worse is that removing the game in question doesn't even remove the DRM. We'll keep an eye out on this to see how this develops. Municipal Wi-Fi is under attack in New Orleans. Bell South wants the city's mesh network shut down. Bell South was also against New Orleans providing Wi-Fi. It speeds faster than 128 kilobits per second. Uh, New Orleans built the network and offered speeds of up to 300 kilobits per second so people could stay in contact after Hurricane Katrina. Way to look like the bad guys, Bell South. Oh, Bell South. Uh, Bluetooth uh, for more than just headsets these days. That's what most people associate it with. Among the newest gadgets were a wireless stethoscope, a remote control for your iPod, handy, and sunglasses, get this, with built-in earbuds. The new possibilities for short-range wireless technology were showcased yesterday by members of the Bluetooth SIG Trade Association. Looks like we'll see Bluetooth replace wires soon. I love nice. that, yeah. Rogers Canada will offer sort of wireless 1.5 megabit per second speed. It's sort of wireless because the modem that connects to Rogers must be plugged into an outlet. For 50 Canadian dollars, you get a 1.5 megabit per second uh, download speed, a paltry 256 kilobits up, along with a 30 gigabyte monthly cap. Not 30 gigabyte, not bad. So, finally, here's a tip. If you pee on your iPod, you can't ask Apple to repair it because, according to Apple, the warranty does not cover pee-related damage. Why on earth would anybody need to be told this? Well, a girl apparently mistakenly used an iPod Nano thinking it was a pregnancy test. What? Perhaps the lesson here is to keep your iPods out of the bathroom and no, that joke isn't even an April Fool's. <laughs> wow. I mean... Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, she must have been the really... Nano pregnancy test. Must have been really... They look that similar? Distraught enough. <laughs> right. You're a teenager. Like, ah. It's the plus on the... Vo no, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> on to the oh, calendar. Tom. We've got a birthday to celebrate, everybody, because Apple has turned 29 today. The Apple II went on sale in April 1977. Happy birthday, Apple. 29 and going strong. We'll see if they make it to 30. Yeah, who knows? Probably. Uh, this is kind of weird news, especially since it's, it's April 1st. Sarah Lane, the host of G4's Attack of the Show, announced uh, via her blog that she's leaving the network and taking a year off to travel the world. Yeah, Aww. sure. I liked Sarah Lane. I worked with her at Tech TV. She's yeah, I, I mean, it's, I guess it just remains to be seen if she's kidding or not. Announced on April 1st. I mean, kind so, of a, sounds like another one of those. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's when will, when will it stop, you know? Uh, Geek Entertainment TV, uh, a very popular podcast, has hit 50 episodes, which is considerable considering that video podcasts are in their infancy and no one's really sure if it's going to stick or, or if there's really a, a, a need and a demand. But they've hit 50. Yeah, good job, Pretty Arena good. and Eddie. Well done. Very good. Sprint has planned uh, EVDO Revision A for later this year, hoping to be widespread by 2007. Cool. Uh, That's a faster version of Evdo, by the way, if people don't know. So it's, it's Sprint getting ahead of the game. And I think it's quite exciting because if it's going to be widespread by 2007, you know, there are these rumors consistently that Apple is going to come out with some kind of phone-related device could incorporate Evdo Revision A. But they already had a phone with the rocker, and it was just a, a disaster. They're not going to do that again. There's no way. Sprint seems to be leading the way, at least in this case. So maybe Apple and Sprint? Uh, yeah, I don't think it means an Apple phone. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll just do Sorry. everything, apparently. Yeah. Uh, the Simpsons movie is out uh, this weekend. Now, a lot of people are saying this might signal the end of The Simpsons. Yeah, because they said if we ever uh, kill the show, go out on a movie. Once we make a movie, you know the show's over. Now, I know that everyone loves The Simpsons, but do we think maybe it might even be time for them to wrap it up? I mean, it's they've been, been over 10 years. I don't know, 12, 13, how many years? Yeah. I'm, Usually when, kind of when shows go to movies, it, it's you know, it's, it's, that's either the end of it or maybe there will be a sequel to the movie, but that's... Mm. Anyway, Simpsons had a good run anyway. Apple has launched eight new products in India this past week, and there's a lot of them, including the one gigabyte Nano, the iPod Hi-Fi, 
iLife 06, a choral du dual, uh, du core duo, <laughs> iMac, pardon me, these are new, ter say. new yeah, terms totally. for me, Mac Mini, iWork 06, and the MacBook Pro. Oh, well, Apple getting big in India. Yeah, exactly. All right, we don't have any voicemails today, but do keep posting your MP3s up at odeo.com. Ev Williams and those guys do a great job over there. We love working with them. Uh, we hope Odeo lasts forever and Ev never leaves. Uh, although we are hearing about a service called TalkShoe that's supposed to launch next month that would allow you to call us directly. So we'll keep an eye out for that and uh, let you know about it. Mm -hmm. On to the emails, TNT at twit.tv. New article appears on ZDNet, which points towards a new Swedish study that says cell phones may actually increase brain tumors by 240% on the side of your brain that you're actually using your cell phone. The article uh, can be found here. And uh, this, by the way, this is from, uh, from Dan from TO, and he, he linked to a ZDNet article. Now, says Dan, is this the conclusive study that we've all been looking for? Because I don't know, I think more research has to be done in the same approach in order to verify these results. I personally may have already racked in a good 500 hours on a cell phone. Does that mean I have a 50% more chance of getting cancer now? I'm a little worried. Uh, Dan, I don't think you have to worry uh, so much. Uh, before you reach behind your right ear and start probing yourself for lumps, says Nate Anderson at Ars Technica, the couple things to remember about this study. First, while there is a 240% increase, uh, and that is significant, the chance of coming down with a tumor is still rather low. So the 240% increase is not, you've got a 240% more chance uh, from a baseline. It just means there's a very small chance and it increased, you know, from a small chance to a less small chance. Uh, this is also just one study uh, among others. The, the people in this study had to be using a cell phone 2,000 hours of use, which works out to about one hour every day for six years. Mm. Uh, and there's other studies that contradict this. So, you know, we, we're still kind of seeing the landscape. It's important to pay attention to this. It says, hey, this this points to maybe some increased risk, uh, but it's self-reporting and, it, and it's based on people saying this is about how much I used it and whether they got cancer. There could be other reasons that they got cancer that need to be controlled for as well. So just one more data point to look at. Yeah, I mean, even the people who are the, the earliest adopters of cell phones are, are still what, had you know, we've got 10 years of research to look at. Mm -hmm. So in its infancy, absolutely. All right. Will Harris, uh, thanks so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. I know you have to stay up late over there in the UK uh, to be with us. Thanks, but Will. Let people know uh, what you're doing over there at BitTech. Well, so I'm doing a, uh, a hardware site, which is called bittech.net. It's all about the current um, latest kind of gadgets. But, you know, I'm really digging what you guys are doing, you know, creating this kind of online TV, um, you know, online radio channel for people to, to people to see. So maybe I'll do something about that in the future. You should. You should just help uh, people, you know, be able to flip through a bunch of different videos. Yeah, well, I guess like flipping through channels on a TV, yeah, something like that. Yeah, except on the Internet. That'd, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Okay, well, I'll think about it. Thanks, Tom. All right. Thank you, Will. Uh, and for everybody else, though, you can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. Give us an email, tnt at twit.tv, or uh, leave us a voicemail by uploading it to odeo.com. That's it for this episode. We'll see you next time. April Fool's.